Hey you guys, this is me, the Metaverse Explorer. This is episode five in the Star Atlas series where we look at the recent updates in the Star Atlas Metaverse. Now, before we get started, I wanna have a big shout out to Apia Industries, my own guild, and a specific community member in there. This is going out to Sensei Yamura. Sensei is a community member there who uh, kindly, very, very kindly donated me my new intro. So Sensei Yamura, arigato, arigashimasu. Okay, play the intro. How cool was that intro? So good. All right, anyway, let's start with the uh, update on the uh, marketplace. So we can see that there are a few new skins like uh, FTX Night, FTX Moon and FTX Beyond. So this was a special drop by FTX in conjunction with Star Atlas. These dropped on the FTX exchange only and they initially started selling at about $80. I think the floor price for them now is about $620 the last I saw. There is another skin for the X4 coming out soon in uh, Radium and I'll show you how you can be in the running to provide liquidity and also get this skin. So that being said, I want to talk to you about the ships that have been sold. So we know that Calico Guardian is a Captain Class ship and it is um, $30,000 as the manufacturer recommended sale price. So that's a very important word I'm gonna to explain to you. So this is the prices that Star Atlas thinks these are worth and wants to sell them at. Now, Based on that, there are still people before the sale starts who are trading these and buying these way above the market valuation of what Star Atlas thinks they should be worth. So for example, the Calico Guardian, even Michael Schragner said that he, uh, the Star Atlas said that the actual MSRP price is $29,985, so $30,000. But I know for a fact that right now people are actually buying this for, let's have a look, people want to buy this now for $35 at a minimum. Now before that people were even selling this higher. So there are a few ships and you can see this happening with a few ships where the actual recommended price is not what the, uh, people are selling them for and people are buying them for a lot higher. Now this is obviously market premium if you think these are going to be worth a lot more because they were the first drop then yeah okay that's a speculative bet. But at the same time you have to keep in mind that the company is saying it's worth one dollar you're paying two dollars. Why are you paying two dollars? Okay so if you're not sure about the proper ship prices, let's uh, go back to the actual ship uh, price guide. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. Let's increase this to 150. Okay, so we can look here. Uh, some of these ships, if you look at column D, some of these ships are the ships that have actually been sold. So we can see the Opal Jet was $20 and the Opod was $1,500. And there are some ships that have actually yet not sold. Probably half of them have actually not been sold yet. So my speculation at the moment is that everyone has spent most of their money on the initial drop of ships. There are still other rares, epics, and legendaries that have not sold yet, that have not gone to to market yet. So I'm speculating when these come out, people won't have enough capital and be wanting to sell their current ships to rotate their capital into these new ships that they either forgot about or haven't actually considered. Now that being said, there's uh, most of them are fighters. There are a few that are specialty ships. So there's runner data runners, there's rescue ships, there's one more freight coming out. There's uh, only multi-role has been sold. There's one bomber, one repair and one transport. Okay. All right, so the next bit of info I want to drop for you guys is not to actually buy any licenses at the moment. So people are outrageously selling these really overpriced licenses like the Faction Passport and the Pilot License, and even the Claim Stake 1 and the Mining Station 1. These prices right now are way inflated over what they want to be. So if you look at Michael Schragner's interviews, he does say that some of these packages are only worth like $10 to $15. And for a Claim Stake 1 and a Mining drill one you might only be paying $15 people are paying like a hundred dollars for just one of them at the moment the only thing that you should be considering buying are the actually limited edition ones such as the legends badge which you only get by holding that legends poster and also the rebirth tier badges now they'll have drops coming later on we don't quite know what they will be but at the moment do not buy faction passports and do not buy pilot licenses for example some of the ships that you have they have two seats or more and if you have two seats or more you will be airdropped 
pilot licenses into your um, into your inventory into your Solana address. So it, it depends on what actual ship you have. So um, there's a few there's information out there. When uh, I'll link it down below so you can find out about it as well. But for the moment, do not buy any faction passports. Do not buy any pilot licenses. Just wait until you actually know what they're worth. People are paying way too much for them right now. All right, so the next bit of information is about the Star Atlas and Radium collaboration for the skin for the PSX5 ship. This is a pretty cool skin. I actually prefer the FTX one, but I missed out on that one. So I'm going to wait for this uh, PSX5 skin. Let's show you how you can get it, okay? So what do you have to do? Uh, Star Atlas says you have to um, actually provide liquidity on Radium Protocol for this. I'm going to show you what exactly you have to do. So this is the Medium article by Radium. So you can have two skins that you can get two skins in one wallet. What you have to do is you have to provide liquidity to the Atlas and Ray Fusion Pool and the um, Polis and Ray Fusion Pool. So what does that mean? That means you're giving your tokens for other people to trade against and you get a receipt of that. You put that receipt and you put it into another contract and then that contract will give you the NFT if you have a certain amount. Let's have a look at how much you actually need. So at the time of writing, which is about two days ago, maybe three days ago now, you needed $2,000 of liquidity in each pool. So if you wanted only one skin, let's say you want to get, you want to provide liquidity in the Atlas and Ray fusion pool, then you are going to need 0.01 LP tokens. And at that time, that was $2,000. I think it's about maybe uh, $1,800 now at the moment. The prices of Atlas and Polis have fallen at the bit, uh, just like everything else in the crypto market. Um, if you wanted to provide liquidity in the uh, Polis and Ray fusion pool, you would need 0.0001 LP tokens. Now remember, these are your receipt tokens to say that you provided liquidity. So provide liquidity first, and then you give that token to another protocol, and that, that same protocol, Radium, will say, okay, thank you for providing liquidity over there. Since you have enough of this, you have 0.01, we're gonna give you this uh, Radium skin, okay? What does that actually look like? In Radium, at the top, you go, instead of trading, you go to farms. And this is, instead of going all, you go to fusion, and on the bottom left, you'll see Radi uh, Polis and Ray liquidity provision, Atlas and Ray liquidity provision. All you gotta do is click on them and it'll tell you to add liquidity here. That'll take you to the initial liquidity pool. Once you've provided liquidity there, remember you have to have the same amount of uh, these two tokens. You have the same amount, you provide liquidity, then you come here and you'll click stake your liquidity tokens. Once you stake it, you start generating Ray and Polis. Now it is very important that you make sure you are above the limit of what they will be able to see, which is 0 0.01 for uh, one of them and 0 0.0001 for the other. Okay, so that being said, once you do that, um, remember, don't compound this in Sol Farm. Just leave this in here for it to be re uh, recognized. So at the moment, there's 44 million in the Polis Ray Pool and there's 52 million in the Polis Ray Pool. Now, what are the risks of actually doing this? If you do this, you expose yourself to impermanent loss. What does that mean? That means if one of the tokens prices diverges away from the other token, then at the end of the day, you could probably have more money in your account by just holding the tokens themselves, okay? If Polis goes all the way down to a dollar and Radium stays zero, you would have lost a whole lot of money because all your Radium in that pool is gonna keep buying Polis and you're just gonna be reducing the amount or the value amount of your, um, of your account, okay? So that being said, the next topic, my favorite guild and my guild, uh, AEP is hosting its own writing competition. So Aethia Industries is having a writing competition for you to actually help construct the entire law of our organization, our DAC. So uh, what can you win? You can win $100,000 in grape, uh, one of uh, PSX5, 50,000 in grape for second place, uh, 10,000 in grape in second in third place, and uh, it'll be 
in conjunction with the great protocol now some of the rules you should probably know of is that it needs to be a story that's between 700 and 2000 words so you have to put a bit of effort into this your story should relate to the law in one of the or multiple metaverse posters you'll have to be a member of the great protocol and also have uh, certain accesses like the meta posters okay and that's up here you'll need to um, have a meta poster at least in your wallet or an armstrong forever poster a great dessert uh, in your wallet or you have to be a ver and you also need to be a verified star atlas wallet holder so this is mainly for the people in the community to help our community grow a bit better i'm not one for writing so i won't be submitting anything if they want a video made i can probably make the video for you guys so that being said it's actually interesting to see who the judges will be so um, the top 10 stories will be judged by santi who is the Star Atlas community coordinator, Star Savage, who's the head of communications at Star Atlas, and Pablo, who's the chief uh, revenue officer, I think it is. All right, so what's next coming up in the Star Atlas metaverse? Soon, we will be able to select our own faction. So you can be an Oni, a Mez, or an Uster. So that being said, you can only select one. So here's some alpha for you. You can have a look at your ships and see which one suits your playstyle. If you'd rather go for a stealth scanning distance, firepower, travel distance or how strength and maneuvering look at your ships and see whereabouts you want to play that being said uh michael wagner also did say each deck can only be in one faction so there are ways around that if hint hint if you know what i mean and soon after that we'll be able to select our own player organizations what does that mean guilds and decks so there are heaps of guilds and decks and next episode i'll be trying to feature all the most of the prominent guilds and decks probably starting with the interstellar alliance probably the biggest of them they're a bit different because they are a guild of a guild they are the biggest guild but they have lots of other smaller guilds under them so it really uh, for me i would recommend you start looking at what different guilds there are i will try and make a video next time about all the different guilds so you can be a bit more informed about your decision another reminder that some of these ships have yet to go on sale so if you think about it other people have probably spent most of their capital on the ships that they wanted the rest of these ships will be in very low supply so if you can manage to bag one of these you are in a better strategical position does that make sense now this is a bit of alpha for everyone out there this is from sensei himself arigato sensei um this is about the star atlas ama uh, town hall 16 about 48 minute mark listen to that and it's about the team talking about how they're going to onboard a lot of more pe a lot more people into the star atlas metaverse and into the savanna or phantom ecosystem and they talk about uh hint hint uh doing some uh quests with coin market cap now this uh is a general thing that coin market cup and coin gecko sometimes do where you log in every day and you're able to collect these little diamonds and after a while you can exchange these diamonds for certain things certain perks at coin gecko you can exchange it for a book or a other nft in coin market cap i'm not really familiar what you can exchange them for but it's the same concept every day you come in here give coin market cup your attention and at the end of the day you collect these diamonds and you'll be able to exchange them or something now what are these things i don't know if they might be nfts in the game they might be a small ship for you to experience the game yourself um, that's currently unknown at the moment so it's just a small alpha drop that might eventuate into something okay and that's it for today's episode guys thank you so much for joining me i'm gonna leave you i think i'll have a routine at the end of every episode star atlas series we're going to look at the top three leaderboard and see what they are up to so this is really good because it gives you an idea of where the top uh three or top 10 factions would be and when the top three or top 10 organizations would be so and the top uh first uh, first guy was have 7GH. His total assets are $4 million. Uh, is 4AV in second, 2.3 million, and G8N at 2 million. So you can see that the top guy has at least double the amount of money as the second guy. That's something really to say. And that doesn't mean that that is his only account. He might own accounts two and account three and might be the richest guy in Star Atlas at the moment. So I'm going to be continuing to cover this at the end of every star atlas episode just to see where the faction and where the kind of the money base is going now that being said hopefully there will be a uh, guild or DAC ranking leaderboard as well which i want to see so these are the organizations and these are the factions i want them all to come up so 
I'll leave you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos, especially when ship missions come out, when um, the ship building modules will come out. A lot more content is going to come. So uh, thanks again. I'll see you very soon. Ciao, guys. Mwah.